to solve questions from this topic, you should have a clear understanding of fundamentals related to trigonometric ratios and right angle triangles. So, let us quickly get into it. So, here we have a right angle triangle. Apart from this right angle, we have another angle theta and with respect to this angle, we can name the sides. The side opposite to this particular angle is called the opposite side and the one just beside it is called the adjacent side and the side opposite to right angle is called hypotenuse. And because we have three sides, the ratio of any two sides gives us six possible permutations and the six ratios are opposite by hypotenuse, adjacent by hypotenuse, opposite by adjacent and their reciprocals that is hypotenuse by opposite, hypotenuse by adjacent, then adjacent by opposite. These are the only possible six ratios with these sides and each of these is given a name. Opposite by hypotenuse is called the sine ratio, adjacent by hypotenuse is cosine ratio, opposite by adjacent is tangent ratio, hypotenuse by adjacent is cosecant and this is secant and this is cotangent. And because these ratios are with respect to an angle theta, it is always a good practice to write it with respect to theta. So, this is called as sin theta, this is cos theta, this is tan theta, cosecant theta, then this is secant theta, cot theta. One very important thing to note, these trigonometric ratios are numbers, not angles. Okay. Out of these six ratios, the ratio which we will be using frequently is tangent. This is the one we need to memorize. So, let me write that tan theta is opposite by adjacent. This is the opposite side and this is the adjacent side. The ratio of these two is tan theta. Okay, this much basic is enough. Now, apart from these basics, you should also memorize a couple of values of these trigonometric ratios. So, let me write them for you sin theta, cos theta and tan theta and the angles are 0, 30, 45, 60 and 90. Let us start with sin theta, sin 0 is 0, sin 30 is 1 by 2, 45 is 1 by root 2, 60 is root 3 by 2 and 90 is 1. For cos theta, these values will be in the reverse order. So, whatever is for 90 degrees, it will be there for 0. So, it will be 1 and then root 3 by 2, then 1 by root 2. 1 by 2 and 0. Then for tan theta, we already know tan theta is sin theta by cos theta. So, you can take the division of these two. So, this becomes 0, 1 by root 3, 1 root 3 and 1 divided by 0, it is not defined. So, let us write as not defined. These values should be in your mind. If you are not thorough, please write them on a paper and try to practice them well. Okay, now let us get into the type of questions. We have only two type of questions. One is based on angle of elevation. Something like there is a tree and the person on a road is looking at the tree and he is supposed to calculate the height of the tree. Now for this, what we will be doing is, we will think of an imaginary triangle and because the person is over here, and when he looks at the topmost part of the tree, there is an angle at which he is looking and this angle is called the angle of elevation. This is type 1. The second type is, the person is on the building or a tower and there is a car or a person walking on the road and we are supposed to calculate at what speed this car is moving or how much distance it will move and so on. Again here, we will be drawing a triangle and we will be taking the horizontal view as the reference. So, from that if we come down by an angle, the theta is called angle of depression and by the rules of transversal, if this is theta, even this is also theta. In the question, generally they will give you angle of depression that is this, but we will assume that the angle is made with respect to the ground and accordingly we will proceed. Okay, when we do the question, I think it will be clear for you. For now, let us proceed into type 1. Problems based on 
angle of elevation. This will be pretty simple. Let's get into the question. The height of a pole is 4 root 3 meters and the length of the shadow is 4 meters. Find the angle of elevation of the sun. So basically they are saying there is a pole and there is sun. So because of the sun, there is a shadow on the ground. We need to find the angle. So for this, let me draw the diagram. Yeah, it looks something like this. There is a tower and not tower, there is a pole, there is a sun and because of the sun rays, the shadow is formed. And clearly you can see there is a triangle formed and the pole is always 90 degrees. So this is a right angle triangle. So we can use a trigonometric ratios. Now here they have given some data. They gave the height of the pole is 4 root 3. So this is 4 root 3 meters and the shadow length is 4 meters. Now, technically, this is actually the opposite side and this is the adjacent side. Now, let me use the formula. We know that tan theta is opposite by adjacent. So, let us substitute this. Tan theta is 4 root 3 by 4, that is root 3. Now, just think about the trigonometric ratios. For what angle we get the answer as root 3? The angle is 60 degrees, tan 60. Now let's get into type 2 questions, that is problems based on angle of depression. A man on the top of a tower standing on the seashore finds that a boat coming towards him takes 10 minutes for the angle of depression to change from 30 degrees to 60 degrees. Find the time taken by the boat to reach the shore. Alright, let me draw a diagram for this. Yeah, imagine this is the tower and there is a small boat coming towards the tower and initially the angle was 30 degrees but after 10 minutes definitely the boat will be moved. Now maybe the boat is over here and they are saying that the second time the elevation is 60 degrees. So between this to this the time lapse was 10 minutes that is what given in the question. Now for this let me draw a triangle for a little more clarity. Okay, here is a triangle. Initially it was 30, then it became 60 degrees. Time lapse was 10 minutes. But nowhere he mentioned about the heights and distances. But let me write it. Let's assume the height of the tower to be h. And initially it might have traveled some x distance, then some y distance before it reached the tower. Now using the trigonometric ratios, let's solve this. First let me take this particular triangle. From this triangle I can write tan 60 is opposite by adjacent so h by y tan 60 we already know this is root 3 so from this I can write y is h by root 3. Now let me take this whole triangle from this I can write tan 30 because the angle over here is 30 degrees is opposite that is h by adjacent. Here the adjacent is this whole thing that is x plus y tan 30 value we already know 1 by root 3 is equal to h by x plus y or x plus y is root 3 h in that y value we just now found out so I will substitute this x plus h by root 3 is equal to root 3 by h or x is root 3 h minus h by root 3 that is 2h by root 3. Now we got the value of x and we got the value of y. Now the reason to find the value of x is we can find out the speed. I can write speed is equals to distance by time. So if I take the distance to be x upon t1, I can say this as x value we found out 2h by root 3 and how much time it took? 10 minutes. So this is basically h by phi root 3 that is the speed of the boat. So definitely when it if the speed is h by phi root 3 over here even it will remain same over here. So I can write it as speed will be y by t2 but speed in both the cases will remain same. So if I substitute h by phi root 3 that is the speed is equals to y what is the value of y we already found here it is h by root 3 divided by time which we don't know so let's find this h can be cancelled 
fifty two is five root three by root three. That is five minutes. Therefore, the answer is option A. That's it for the topic heights and distances.